People across America tuned into the Senate hearing wherever they happened to be credit. Joshua Roberts Reuters America watched transfixed on mobile phones on buses and in gyms, in bars and sitting rooms, and even aboard Air Force One, as Christine Blasey Ford took her seat in front of a Senate committee to give her account of the allegations against Donald Trump's nominee for the Supreme Court. By the time she had finished her quiet, measured answers, even pundits on Mr. Trump's favorite channel Fox News were worried. But then came Brett Kavanaugh in his angry denials, venting his fury as he claimed he was the victim of a grotesque character assassination. Viewers will have made up their minds about who they trusted at the end of the day. The final decision about whether Mr. Kavanaugh will be confirmed to the Supreme Court probably now lies with just three undecided Republican senators. Here's what we learned, how did she do? Professor Ford was hesitant, quiet and clearly nervous. She asked for several breaks and regular caffeine shots in the form of coffee or Coca-Cola, but as she responded to the forensic probing of Rachel Mitchell, the prosecutor brought in by Republican senators, her steady account of what happened three decades ago never wavered. And she offered a plausible account of why she waited so long to reveal her story. She never wanted to make her name public, she said, and came forward only because it was her civic duty rather than out of any political motive. In fact she described how she came forward before Mr. Kavanaugh was nominated, when his name began circulating on lists of possible candidates. Throughout she gave the impression of someone who only wanted to be a million miles from Washington, and a far cry from the Democratic activist described by Republicans. Presser Ford giving evidence credit, pool via AP she admitted when she could not remember details, such as the date of the attack, and even apologized, saying I wish I could be more helpful. But on the key details she was firm. Asked how certain she could be that Mr. Kavanaugh was the attacker, she declared, 100%. How did he do? Mr. Kavanaugh giving testimony credit, pool via AP Mr. Kavanaugh ripped up the statement that had been circulated in advance of the hearing. So rather than the mild-mannered judge of this week's Fox News interview, we got the fire and fury of a man wronged. His face contorted with anger, he issued a blistering statement declaring the confirmation process a national disgrace and warning other men their careers could be ruined if his confirmation was wrecked by what he called a character assassination. And then he cried, as he described the impact on his family and the way his daughter had offered to pray for his accuser. That's a lot of wisdom from a 10-year-old, he said. He even echoed Professor Ford in his denial, saying he was 100% certain he did not commit any assault. Who is Brett Kavanaugh, Donald Trump's Supreme Court nominee? But he also left the door open to investigators wanting to pick over his youthful years. He admitted drinking a little too much beer on occasions, but denied ever suffering memory loss. And his explanation about vomiting after drinking beer, that he was known for having a weak stomach, provoked skepticism among Democratic senators. What did Donald Trump think? By all accounts the U.S. president was glued to every moment of the hearing. Insiders said he and his allies were unnerved by Professor Ford's emotional appearance but hardened by Mr. Kavanaugh's forceful pushback. He reportedly kept abreast of what was happening from his office on Air Force One, as he traveled from New York to Washington, and then once back in the White House Trump missed hardly a moment of the proceedings, relying on DVRs. To keep up on the Senate Judiciary Committee hearing Thursday first from his private office on Air Force One as he traveled from New York to Washington, and then back at the White House, using DVRs to fill in the gaps. His verdict came within minutes of the hearing's end. Judge Kavanaugh showed America exactly why I nominated him. His testimony was powerful, honest, and riveting. Democrats search and destroy strategy is disgraceful and this process has been a total sham an effort to delay, obstruct, and resist. The Senate must vote, Donald J. Trump, at real Donald Trump, September 27, 2018 that could yet be enough to save Mr. Kavanaugh's nomination. What happens next? With the president's support clear, Republican senators gathered to work out how to proceed. 
After a private meeting they emerged to say they would press ahead with a vote of the Judiciary Committee on whether to recommend him for confirmation as planned at 9.30 a.m. on Friday. If that goes along party lines it would then trigger a procedural floor vote in the Senate, possibly on Saturday, with a full vote early next week the Republican race to confirm, Brett Kavanaugh Republicans have a tiny margin on error in the Senate. Two Republicans voting against Mr. Kavanaugh would be enough to end his nomination. His fate probably rests with three undecided Republicans, Jeff Flake, Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski. They met privately on Thursday evening. And they aren't saying anything yet.